Welcome to another episode of Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This series is following our tiny house project from the early stages through to completion and beyond. In this episode, we go over our low voltage and control. All right, we're finally gonna get into what this whole mess is. So basically, when we were still planning before we started building, we had the idea to have the entire house lit by LED strip lighting that could be any color and any brightness. So to make sure that that was doable, we ordered a bunch of electronic components and I put together a little prototype as a proof of concept. And then while I was learning how to use the Arduino microcomputer, which is what's gonna control it, we started thinking about all the ways that we could do home automation and control with it. So this is gonna be an attempt at a smart tiny house, still fully DIY because we're gonna be programming every function from scratch. And a lot of this wiring is just extra stuff we've put in. Some of it might not get used, but we've gone a bit crazy to give ourselves lots of options and opportunities to have more things controlled by the computer. All right, we're getting lots of uh, wires building up here and what's gonna be the control center. And all of these uh, gray ones and uh, these, these two white ones, but mostly the gray ones are for our LED lighting system. We're gonna have 12 volt LED strip lighting for the whole house, uh, except for one spot where there'll be a regular light. And it's uh, strip lighting that can be any color. So in order to uh, control the colors, we need a cable that has four separate conductors. And uh, this stuff is a bit of an uncommon type of cabling. It's 16 gauge, um, but that's gonna give us lots of headroom to work with. We could always uh, add longer strips or change the type of strip. There's lots of capacity. This is good for up to 10 amps. And uh, so there's gonna be 19 runs like this. And so that's what I'm working on right now. And I'm making sure to label everything as I go uh, because there's gonna be so many of these when we go to connect them all, we wanna make sure we know uh, which wire is going to which strip. Because we're gonna have a, quite a big bundle of cables here, Instead of stapling them all down, I'm using these zip ties that have a hole for a screw in them. And I've got the loop just started so that uh, I can keep adding cables in. And then once I'm confident that I've got absolutely everything, I can cinch them down and sort of straighten out the cables nicely. We're also keeping the 120 volt cabling and the 12 volt cabling separate everywhere, including drilling fresh sets of holes for all the 12 volt stuff. We're gonna be framing the actual walls of the toilet room here after the um, exterior walls are insulated and vapor sealed. And obviously the wiring needs to be done before we get to that point. But there are gonna be lights uh, inside the toilet room here. So we need to prepare the wires for when that time comes. And the way we've got it is that the framing is gonna come right up under this joist and against this, which is a solid stud. So I'm gonna try some fancy drilling here to uh, allow the wires to come and enter what's going to be the wall here. And I'll show you uh, how I'm going about it and what the plan is here. So you can see how I drilled straight in and then drilled at an angle to meet up with that hole. So now we can pass cabling from the uh, framing through the hole, and then when it comes time to frame this room, the stud that's gonna go right up against here will just pre-drill a hole and sleeve the wires through as we bring it up, and then those wires will be inside the framing of this room, and we can finish it off that way. There's a couple spots where we're gonna enter the 12 volt cabling into a vapor boot. This is where we're gonna have a dehumidifier and uh, probably powered off 12 volts. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just cut the tiniest little hole in the bottom and then kind of ram the cabling through to enlarge the hole and that way the plastic will stay tight around the uh, cabling and that'll probably be good enough. Um, but if it tears or if we wanna make it better, we could just put a little putty, bit of putty or something in there to, to keep the vapor seal. And then I'm just gonna zip tie it right where I'm holding it and then coil this up inside. We've done another sweep of the house to make sure that we've picked up everything we could possibly need uh, with this type of cabling, uh, the lights and 12 volt stuff. And uh, once we 
felt confident, dressed the cables back and worked the slack back towards the, uh, basically the, what's gonna be the control center over here and uh, zip tied it all up nicely. So we got a bundle of lighting cabling and some other uh, 12 volt power cabling here. For the lighting cabling, we're just bringing them down to the rough area where the light's gonna be and then leaving some slack to deal with later. For example, here is going to be the framing for the shower room and these uh, cables need to enter into that framing eventually to go to the lights. So we've just left the length here for that. In the kitchen, we're gonna have under cabinet uh, lighting strips. So we've marked where uh, the cabinet's probably gonna come down to and we've got the cabling poking out underneath. And in all cases where we just got one cable to deal with, we're using these little baby uh, sort of little tacks to hold it down. We're planning on putting light strips down the centers of some of the uh, joy spaces here. So we've also got cabling ready to go for that. This is the bundle of lighting cabling. There's one cable for every single light strip out there, which in most cases is gonna to be totally overkill, but it will make fusing simpler here. And it also means that we don't need to make daisy chain connections out at the lights. One cable comes into one light and it's a simple connection in all cases. This is all the cabling for the other 12 volt stuff that we've put in. Uh, this 12 gauge cable is for the furnace because the installation manual recommends 12 gauge. It's probably a bit overkill again, but um, we're just going with the recommendation from the manual. And then all this is, it's the same cabling that we're using for all the lighting, the 16 gauge four conductor. And this is just going to a bunch of other places. There's, there is one that goes to the furnace as well that's gonna be used for the thermostat to uh, call for heat. Um, and then it'll have a couple extra wires down there as well. And then there's another one that goes to the on-demand water heater, which needs 12 volt power. Uh, but then we got some other stuff, and part of the uh, part of the reason is we're we're going a bit crazy and just adding a bunch of extra wires for things down the road. As the design of this system has evolved, we've been sort of thinking a bit more ahead to the possibility of um, hooking up a battery bank for the 12 volt power and powering kind of more stuff off of 12 volts. So we've run extra wires um, for potential future use. So there's one that goes to the toilet room as we've talked about potentially having a heated toilet seat might be a fun thing to try. And then we'd also have power there for additional fans or dehumidification for the uh, composting toilet. Uh, and then also in the toilet room, um, I've talked about having a foot switchable uh, valve for the water on the sink so that you can um, like soap your hands up with the water off and then rinse it all foot controlled. So anyway, there's power run there um, for those possibilities. Uh, there's also an extra cable down to the kitchen sink for the same foot switchable thing. And then again, we'll have extra cable or conductors in the wiring for maybe something down the road that we might want to add. There's one for up in the kitchen cabinetry up high where there'll be a general dehumidifier for the whole space which again being 12 volts could run off grid potentially. Uh, there's another cable that goes up to the loft uh, for general purpose. We thought applications, uh, like possible applications would be if we wanted to have the windows open uh, in the winter and it was a bit cold, we could put a heated blanket maybe, or more likely if it's too hot in the summer, we could hook up uh, like a tiny air conditioner or a fan or something. And then that could also all be powered off the battery. So we've got a bunch of extra wiring here, uh, just trying to think ahead to all sorts of different possibilities and making sure we've got the wiring for anything we could possibly think of. So this is probably the biggest bundle of cabling and it's CAT6 cabling, which is what you'd use to plug into the internet. And we're using that simply because it has eight little wires inside it. Uh, and because we're doing the lighting that's controlled by the computer. We can't just use regular light switches out in the field that do one light at a time. We basically need to tell the computer uh, each time we want to turn a light on or change its color or whatever. So we have a Cat6 cable running to each spot where there's going to be a light switch, which are actually going to be little push buttons. So that when we push the button, it's actually sending a signal to the computer and telling it what to do to the light. As the beast grew, we added even more Cat6 cabling to a bunch of other locations to get 
more input that the computer can use to make decisions. So we've got spots where we're going to have temperature sensors so we can control the furnace, uh, humidity sensors to control when the dehumidifier comes on, and we've got motion sensors for outside lights and that kind of thing, and pretty much any kind of input we can think of to control any kind of function. If you want to see some of our previous videos, click on the preview tiles and subscribe if you want to follow our progress. You can also visit our website here. Twelve volt cabling into a vapor boot. This is where we're gonna vapor boot.